for Skyrim, it's an underestimation to say that there is a wide variety of different armors and weapons. There are tons, so many, that I was contemplating even making this video in the first place. But inevitably, as Skyrim is an old game, some of the armors and the weapons are showing signs of aging. With the help of a handy mod called Visualize Vanilla, which I introduced in a previous video, we'll try to overhaul every texture for this category of armor and weapons. I really think that the textures of Skyrim armors and weapons are generally good considering their age, but there are still many reasons why you would want to mod them. You might want your character to look polished to the max with high quality armor, or you might be a virtual photographer like yours truly, and the close-up photos just need to look as sharp and HD as they can be. And because it would be boring just to install the classic Amidian Born texture pack and call it a day, we're looking at everything one by one and steering away from large texture packs. Go check out part 1 of this video series if you haven't already, and if you have, let's jump straight into the video. Just believe me when I say we have a lot to do here today. Let's start by getting retextures for the light armor. Personally, I like heavy armor more, but I think this category contains a lot of good looking pieces that I know a lot of people adore for a good reason. Let's begin with something more modest. Among the first things you loot in a new playthrough is probably the fur armor, which is very fashionable among the bandits of Skyrim. It has four variants with different levels of bareness and all of them can be immensely improved with rustic clothing combined with fur shader armors. Rustic clothing is an absolutely massive mod. Not only it overhauls the fur armor, but also pretty much all of the clothing items in the game, including mages robes and rags and bandages with new high quality textures. We'll take a look at that later. Optionally, for the fur armor, you might also want to look at Leather Armors Retexture SE, which improves fur, hide and leather armors beautifully. When your preferred armor texture mod is combined with fur shader armors, it results in a very realistic and cool looking fur armors, which are now definitely getting looted from bandits that went off guard at the wrong time. We follow the same pattern of using rustic mods with the rebellious Richman Forsworn. Rustic armor and weapons overhauls a selection of armors and weapons, and among them are the Forsworn armaments and protective gear. See, I'm just trying to find alternative words for armor and weapons at this point. Used together with fur shader armors, the illusion of real animal pelts which have been crafted into armor is quite perfect, and the Reachmen look cool as heck now, as if they already didn't. Although, I don't want to admire these Hagraven bulligers too much. Next, we have some of the Skyrim factions. The headquarters of the Thieves' Guild is located deep in the sewers of Riften. It's the perfect faction to join to practice your kleptomanical fantasies, whether you're interested in planning major heists or just wiping some sweet rolls. After proving yourself in this guild of sneaksters, you're allowed to suit up in the practical Thieves' Guild armor. I think this armor looks amazing in all of its functionality, but needless to say, with frankly HD Thieves Guild armors, it looks even better. In the concept art, the sleeves are greyish white colored fabric, which is a change introduced by this mod in place of the leather sleeves. This mod also retextures all the different variants to the armor, such as Carlia's version. I was a big fan of this armor before, now even more so, even if the faction is not my preferred one. Now, we looked at the Thieves' Guild armor, so of course, we also have to take a detailed look at the Nightingale armor. This is subjective, of course, but for me, the Nightingale armor has never been anything special. I'm sorry, fight me. Anyway, the best bet to enhance this armor is installing Frankly HD Nightingale armor and weapons. Not only this retexture improves the armor itself, but also the corresponding sword and custom unique scabbard. Because it has been passed down through generations of nightingales, the armor is heavily weathered on the black leather. From the faux mod installer, you can also choose to get the armor without the cape, although I don't know why you would do that since capes are awesome, or replace the vanilla fingerless gloves with the full gloves. 
I think the armor looks way better and more interesting now, but I can imagine how the new, rugged and worn style could divide opinions, so let me know what you think about it. Let's look at more armors of the Skyrim factions. You can't deny that the famous Dark Brotherhood armor, Shrouded Armor, is the most stylish and sexy choice for an assassin type of character whether you chose to destroy this organization or not. For this armor, it was too hard for me to choose only one mod, so I broke my own rule and chose two this time. The first one is a simple retexture to make the armor look high quality while staying completely faithful to the original design. This one looks amazing up close. You can also get a black version of this armor from the optional files, which looks cool and maybe subtler than the classic red one. The second one is for you who want something new out of the shrouded armor, and I think this redesign might just be the right fit. Even though Dark Brotherhood armor SE is quite different from the original, I think the design fits perfectly to the style of the Assassin organization. You can also get recolors for this mod, and I'm really into this all black variant, even though again the red one is iconic. Do you prefer the classic retexture or the reimagined shrouded armor? I heard they're reforming the Dawn Guard, vampire hunters or something. The Dawn Guard is the ancient order of vampire hunters, and you can always count on them to help whenever you find yourself in a bind with this blood sucking bunch. The Dawn Guard armors are practical with all the belts and the potion flasks on the hip, which somehow makes me think of witchers, actually. Gotta say, there are some similarities there. This armor gets beautifully enhanced with Frankly HD Dawn Guard armors and weapons. Frankly, I love all of these Frankly HD armors, but this one knocks it out of the park. You can see how the weapons have this distinctive red glow like this rune axe here, which separates them from normal steel weapons. This mod is definitely on my list of one of the must-have retextures for any Dawnguard playthrough for its polished and accurate look. Ancient Falmer armor, or as it's sometimes also known as Snow Elf armor, is an absolutely beautiful unique white armor from the Dawnguard DLC. We'll replace the texture with Remy Rose's Ancient Falmer Armor HD, which stays true to the original design while making it look a little bit more ethereal with 4K textures and lessening the heavy contrast on the breastplate details. Of course, together with the armor, we must also enhance Oriel's bow and shield that also come with the Dawnguard DLC. Both of them get brand new textures which clears them up and changes their appearance slightly. On the mod pages, there are optional files if you like your bow and shield to appear visibly worn or even ebony instead. I adore the added carvings on the shield, it just looks incredible now, although I'd prefer if the shield kept the original silvery shade. Great looking textures, no less. From the same mod author, we have the interesting looking cheating armor from the Dragonborn DLC. Remy Rose's Chitin Armor HD overhauls the textures of both Chitin Light and Heavy Armor, as well as the Morag Tong variant of the armor. The textures look simply excellent and less washed out now, and there are both 2K and 4K versions available. Now that we are in Soul's time, we might as well do Bone Mold Armor. Yes, I know, it's heavy armor, and yes, we are breaking this divide of heavy and light armor, it's fine. And what's even more fine is this 4K bone mold retexture. Simple and to the point, it makes the armor and the shield look like it's from this decade, which is funny since the mod was released in the last decade. Anyway, you can also get the armor with the red cloth instead of the blue if you want. Why look like a common bandit while roaming the land of Skyrim when you can look like the ultimate dragon slayer? The dragon armors are ideal for those who want it to be known that they devour dragons for breakfast. Frankly HD Dragonbone and Dragon Scale armor and weapons offers a high quality visual enhancement to the Dragonbone armors and the Dawnguard DLC weapons, as well as the Jagged Crown, which is of course also made of Dragonbone. Overall, the design is still the same as it was, but you can see that on top of the improved textures, the colors have more contrast, especially on the helmet. 
Elven armor has always been one of the best looking armors in Skyrim in my opinion, but especially when enhanced with this retexture, it is probably in my top 3. All of the intricate detailing on the surface of the plate is looking all sleek and clean, as well as the embossment details. The dirt and scrapes are no more, and now the armor looks like it's fresh from the factory. I also think the color of the armor is better now with less saturation and more lifelike golden and brassy shine. The elven weapons get the same treatment and look quite fantastic now. The mod also enhances the Thalmer robes to a new standard, so be sure to grab one for yourself after you show a few unsuspecting Thalmer agents some well-known Skyrim hospitality. By the way, many of the armors coming up in this video are retextured by the same mod creator, Xavbia. There have been many new vanilla-friendly retextures from this modder recently, and I'm simply blown away with how well-made these mods are, even when they are released in relatively short span of time. All of the mods by this creator contain a foam mod installer for add-ons too, which is nothing short of incredible. From what I've gathered, Glass Armor of Skyrim divides the player's opinions. Some people think it's downright hideous with the lower part looking like a bunch of weird tentacles, and some people have the wrong opinion. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, lower your children. Anyway, Glass Armor's and Weapons Retexture SE improves the armor a lot, especially when you go up close and see the fine details and how the bronze and the emerald green, or should I say malachite, match together. The added detailing especially gives this armor more value visually. Just look at that wing feather pattern on the side of the helmet for example, and all the sweet clarity of the colors. Now I think I might be able to actually wear this armor. The included glass weapons also get improved by a mile with the new textures. Whether you align with the Imperial Legion or the Stormcloaks, you must admit that General Tullis' armor looks pretty awesome. With Imperial Armors and Weapons Retexture SE, the mod follows the suite of changing the colors more realistic and less saturated and defining the details further. For the studded Imperial Light Armor, the leather now looks less unnaturally shiny and the studying or the chainmail is now perfectly detailed. I know we were supposed to go through the Light Armor first, but for the sake of making things easier again, here is also the Imperial Armor, which is classified as Heavy Armor. I really like how the belt of the set looks now and the fur around it. The scabbard of the Imperial Sword looks magnificent, there is less tear and wear and the lacing is removed. Overall, these textures make it feel like the Imperial Legion is getting supplied brand new equipment to further the political cause in Skyrim, and that's if something is immersive. Let's upgrade our heavy armors next. Say whatever you want about the iron armor, I think it's utterly charming and will never go out of style, and that's why it's the first one on the list. This is the armor that defines Skyrim, but the fact is, it doesn't hold up very well, especially when you look at it up close. The retexture makes it look incredibly good and convincing, now I can trust this armor till it's all worn and damaged. Of course, all the weapons and shields are also included in the retextures of this mod and makes them look shiny and high definition too. The Blades Armor gets a clean retexture with none other than Blades Armors and Weapons Retexture SE, sharpening the visuals especially when looking at the fine details. The Falmer Armors and Weapons Retexture SE, on the other hand, cleans up the Falmer armor nicely, although I still can't see myself wearing this anytime soon. Shellbug Helmet can also be included in the retextures from the Foam Mod installer. Carved Nordic Armors and Weapons Retexture SE fixes up the textures on the carved Nordic armors and some of the special items such as Blood Skull Blade, which has always been one of my favorite two-handed weapons in this game and now looks banging. I'm pretty sure that there are some people watching this video and maybe furiously writing a comment about the absence of the widely esteemed Nordwar UA armor, so let's make things right straight away with this great dwarven armor replacer. 
For me, replacing most of the armors with the more realistic and medieval Nordwar UA versions is personally too much deviation from the original, but there are a couple of replacers I like a lot, and of course, this dwarven armor is one of them. I rather like the way it makes you look knightly instead of the vanilla way of making you appear as one of the dwarven centurions. If you're a fan of Nordwar UA mods, please keep watching the video because there is more coming later. Some people call it edgy, some people call it badass. Nevertheless, Daedric armor has the highest armor rating in the game and to this day it still enjoys the popularity of the general public. With Daedric armors and weapons retexture SE, a Rudy HQ's more lights for ENB, the armor set, shield and the weapons look incredible with added light sources to glow in the dark as well as with the upgraded textures. The armor looks darker and less reflective now, with a sweet matte finish and less like some regular shiny steel painted black and corroborates the fearsome aesthetic. With or without the added lights, the armor looks undoubtedly better with the new textures. If you watched the previous video in this series, you probably thought I was done with making things glow in Skyrim, but unfortunately you'd be wrong. Whatever armor set would be better to face off the RGB Alduin than this fabulous glowing ebony armor. Based on the original Amidian born retexture, glowing ebony armor by Mari alters the ebony armor with added glow textures and some other small changes on the texture. There is also an option to get this armor without the glow if you feel like it's too much. It still looks amazing. Together with glowing ebony weapons again by Mari, the flashy set is complete. Now, I think the worst part about this mod is deciding which color I like the best. There is nothing quite like wearing some quality orcish armor, makes you feel all bold and intimidating. Orcish armors and weapons retextures E makes the armor and the weapons darker and more sophisticated while of course enhancing the tiniest details. The retexture also makes the armor look like it also utilizes leather a little bit more on top of the heavy metal material. So if you want to make a statement, wear this armor and no one will question your strength. Now I'm thinking that maybe I should have studied marketing instead of design. It might surprise some, but the steel plate armor of Skyrim is possibly my favorite vanilla heavy armor in the game for its functionality and subtle and sleek appearance. You can mix all kinds of different armor pieces with the breastplate and it will always look good. Steel armors and weapons retexture SE breathes new life into this classic armor by removing all the swirly patterns and instead adding new fine detail patterns, seen here on the shoulder plates and the helmet. The same applies to the steel weapons. The fur of the steel armors also get the shell texturing from fur shader armors so the entirety of the armor looks even better. I must admit, I do miss the swirly patterns a little bit though. From the Kashi video, you guys already know that I'm a filthy furry, so of course my favorite faction in the game is and has always been the Companions. Even though the story and the execution of the quests of the guild leave some people a little bit disappointed, I will defend this over-the-top arrogant bunch of mercenaries for life. The wolf armor can be obtained when joining the faction, and with sleek wolf armor mods remesh and wolf armors and weapons retexture SE, the armor looks absolutely incredible in my opinion. On top of that, we have fur shader armors once again to add that sweet sweet shell texture on the fur parts of the armor to make it look realistic. Shield of Isgramor and Wutrad also get a beautiful retexture. You might not like it, but this is what peak performance in Skyrim looks like. So, as I teased before, we have more from Nordwar UA. There is indeed another mod besides the Dwarven Armor Replacer we're looking at today, and this is the amazing Sons of Skyrim. With this mod, we're overhauling Stormcloak and all of the Hold Guard armors. This mod changes the guard's armor design completely to a more medieval style while still making sure that you can differentiate them from each other with visible hold digils and colors. I'm just gonna say, all of the armors look incredible, but the Stormcloak armors are looking especially beautiful and just look at that detail on the cloaks. Also, I love those mittens. Makes sense for the cold climate. 
For the Stormcloak Rebels, there are six variations of the armor altogether, ranging from simple light armor to heavy, expensive armor. If your PC can afford it, grab the optional high-quality 4K textures from optional files and you'll enjoy the beauty of this armor pack even more. Additionally, if you're not a fan of replacing the guard's armors but still like the look of the mod, there is also a standalone version of this mod also available. Whichever files you choose, this mod is absolutely fantastic and it elevates the affected NPCs to a new level. I highly recommend it if you're interested in changing the classic guard appearance to something new as well as getting kick-ass armors to your Stormcloak peeps. There are tons of unique items in the game, some of which have been already covered by previous mods. Let's take for example Vutrad, the two-handed battle axe being retextured by Wolf Armor and Weapons Retexture CC. There are still a lot more of them, which is something I love about Skyrim, since unique items in the game are so much fun to collect, but sadly some of them are just not worth collecting for looking so dull. From the next mod's name, JS Unique Utopia SE Daggers, you can already guess what it does and, oh boy, does it do it well. The mod overhauls all unique daggers in the game with incredible high quality, super inspired dagger models and textures and needless to say, they look insanely good. And even better for those who have less VRAM to spare, you can get the 1K or 2K version of this mod and still enjoy and collect these amazing reimagined daggers. They still have the same feeling as the original designs, but they're just improved in every way, even the sheathed redesigns are included. My favorite must be the Nettlebane, which one do you think is the best? From the same mod author, John Skyrim, we also have a remake of the Helm of Ungol, which is also a unique item in the game, a helm which once was worn by Isgramor's son himself. The mod provides gorgeous textures and meshes for it, and now you can be the one to continue the legacy with style wearing this heavy armor helm. For other unique weapons, there is also another quite essential mod to add on the list. Unique Uniques. This mod is truly a classic and probably very familiar to many of you. It replaces some of the special items in the game, such as Angie's bow, Dragonbane and the Longhammer, making them truly stand out from the common weapons. It is finally time for our last category and mod for this video. For all of the clothes and robes, I'm not exaggerating when I say rustic clothing is a number one must-have mod to take the visuals to a new level. It is actually so easy to underestimate the impact this mod actually has in the game. Just think about your characters looking super good with all the NPC overhauls and high poly heads and hairs and whatnot, and then the garbs they're wearing look rather ugly and <laughs> pixelated. Rustic clothing overhauls all the common clothes textures from barkeep's garments to red guard clothes as well as other fabric from mirax robes to vampire armor. Actually, every single clothing piece in the game is included in this mod. Every single clothing piece, even the small things like underwear and bandages. It's crazy, really. Even the wedding dress of Vittoria Vici is included, and now seeing the vanilla dress again, I wonder why on earth is it dirty? I know Skyrim is not exactly the cleanest place that is out there, but come on, she's the cousin of the emperor and couldn't get a clean dress? I'm glad that Rusty Clothes fixes that right up among the other pieces of clothing. Now they look like they have been washed at least once sometime in the fourth era. Alright, we're finally done for today. Now my armors and weapons should look good and properly remastered. I'm so happy to see that there are a lot of new mods for retexturing the vanilla armors, especially the work of Sabio has been wonderful to follow. I also hope you found some new mods for your game, so let me know in the comments if you did. Again, this video was part 2 of replacing all vanilla textures with modded ones, so go check out the first part of the video series if you haven't already, where we're modding creatures and nature. In the next and last part of the series, we'll go over all the things in towns and cities, including such things as shrines and statues, for example. Also, do like and subscribe and all that jazz to let me know you're interested in more Skyrim mod videos in the future. See ya!